Now, our next customer builds on Bill's technology. It's a friend of Bill's who, who looked at Bill's technology and applied it to the problem of robotic assisted surgery. Very, very cool. Please join me in welcoming the founder and chief visionary officer of Mako Surgical Corporation, Roni Abovitz. So thanks for coming. Roni, what does Mako Surgical do? Mako Surgical makes uh, human interactive surgical robotics that assist people to get back on their feet very quickly, and we do uh, knee and hip surgery with it. And so what, did, what happened that inspired you? How did you get inspired to try and change the way the world does surgery? Well, really early on, this is a true story. It's just uh, probably like most of the audience, growing up watching Star Wars, playing Atari and breaking all my bones playing baseball and football yeah, and it all got mashed up in yeah. my head and sort of came out as surgical robotics. That's, that's like the meta, meta theme of what happened yeah. here. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, it's a lot of fun hanging around with Roni here as you're going to see. So, um, but seriously, so you grew up, that's important as a child, you know, like a lot of us, into technology and breaking some bones and you went to school, what, what did you study in, in college? I studied um, uh, mechanical engineering and biomedical engineering. I also okay. was a cartoonist, so, so all that together yeah. matters. Oh, really? And you're an engineer. You're not a doctor. Engineer, right? not a doctor. You're going to establish that right now. You'll see how Although that Although I gets. play one on SolidWorks World. You play one at SolidWorks World, yeah. Um, and so uh, tell us about your, what was your first job after biomedical engineering school? My first job as an eager beaver engineer coming out of school was working for an Italian orthopedic implant company. They designed hips and knees. And they sent me to go learn about hip surgery from a surgeon. So I go into the operating room, and I'm really excited. And the surgeon brings me right up to the patient. I'm like, this is so cool. He opens up the patient, and I'm like, wow. And he's got the incision. And he turns around and looks at me. He goes, what do I do next? And I'm like, who are you talking to? And he says, you. You know, you're from the company. What do I do now? I'm like, you must be. I'm not going to say that word. And he's like, no, seriously, what do we do now? So I run down to my car, I grab the instructions for use, they were in Italian. And I'm like freaking out. And I also had bought a textbook on orthopedic surgery from the local med school. And I run back to the room and I got these things open and I'm like, you're really serious? He's like, yeah, what do we do now? I said, pick this up, pick that up. And we actually, you know, we got our way through the surgery. I think this is going to be okay. I'm improvising. Not quite like yesterday's Apollo 13, but you know, at a very small scale. Yeah, yeah it's a pretty serious issue, though. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, uh, and you, you also told me about that uh, that the process was way more primitive than you thought. It was right? very primitive, and I think like the inspirational moment for me to to do what became Mako was he's sawing off the femoral head, which is sort of like the ball and socket of your hip. And I'm in there looking, and the femoral head literally just pops out, bounces off my forehead, and I'm covered with blood and sprayed. And I'm going, there's got to be a better way to do this. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, you know, we all know that when uh, the, the apple fell on Newton's head, you know, he started thinking about gravity, and the bone hits Roni in the head. And he's a young engineering student, and he says, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a so better you way. Had, tell us about, you, so you had a vision, an inspiration. Tell us about your vision. What was it? So the vision was like initially like this cloudy thought about robotics and software as sort of a process to make things better in surgery. And then a professor friend of mine, a guy named Mike Peshkin from Northwestern, said, you've got to go meet this guy named Bill Townsend. He's doing this really far out stuff with robots that work with people. Go see if this makes any sense. I go up and meet Bill, and he's got this robot that's like throwing baseball pitches. And I'm like, I love baseball. This is great. And we're talking about stuff, and he's talking about his whole future of people and robots, and I'm talking about robots doing medicine. I said, Bill, I want to take your, your robot to med school. He thought that was totally cool, and it was like a totally serious conversation. And he took me seriously, and I was like, this is awesome. And I was so excited that we were going to go change the world. But other people uh, didn't, not everyone got it the way Bill did, right? Oh, absolutely not. Bill was like maybe several decades ahead in time. And, you know, I'd go to a surgeon, I'd say, you know, do you want to help invest in this company, be part of it? And it's like, what are you talking about? It's like robots and haptics. And he's like, get out of my office. And then I'd go to the next surgeon and say, robot, get out of my office. <laughs> 
who are you, a kid? Get out of my office. You know, yeah. it was just all that kind of get out of my office till it was like a bad sitcom for a while. And you spent, so you spent like 10 years and you finally raised money. You know, it's real persistence of vision for Roni. And, and you raised money and got the company started, right? It was 10 years like wandering in the desert, eating rattlesnakes, like sipping water out of cactus. As well. Finally, we, we actually raised a couple hundred million dollars and went public in 2008. So it did, it did have a small, yeah. it finally came together. Uh, and what's the product system today that you offer from Mako? So Mako's product today, it, it really builds around the, the process in surgery we call Makoplasty, which is the whole thing that we do for the patient. Um, but it's built around a Rio robotic platform, which is a, the only human interactive robotic device built for orthopedic surgery. We also build application software, the instrumentation, I think most importantly, the first set of implants designed to be put in people with robotics. And you, you start by scanning the patient's knee, right? Yeah, that, there's a, uh, here we go. So we oh, start by getting a scan of the patient's knee and that magically becomes a 3D model of the knee which, which actually works and we do the biomechanics of what that patient's knee is like and we actually figure out exactly where their implants need to go. It's a bit like a flight plan uh, for the surgeon. So you take the knee scan into your software, right, which is up there? We take the knee scan into our software, which is a bit like a CAM system. Yeah, a CAM system for, for bones, kind of. Right? And uh, the, a little yeah. quick geek out for the SOLIDWORKS group, um, all the implants are designed in SOLIDWORKS, but the implant models get loaded into our software, and we make haptic models of those implants um, in SOLIDWORKS too. I think we're the only company making haptic structures in SOLIDWORKS to be used with robotics. Yeah, he right designs now. things in SOLIDWORKS that don't exist but give you haptic feedback. And you know what was, it was super cool? I went to visit Roni and he actually let me do a knee surgery on, on a plastic skeleton. Yes, okay. not know, on a real person. It wasn't real. But I felt like I could do it on, you know, if any of you want to let me do it, I mean, I guess you could try. But uh, it was so... I'm not so, commenting on it, that it part. Just, so cool. I mean, you go in and you bring the cutting tool to the skeleton and his CAM program guides you. It, it, it only lets you cut where you should be. It's impossible to cut any of the surrounding tissue, which would be a little bit of a problem. And I think the key you know, there is this idea of the robot and the person working together. The robot does not do it by its own. It's the human and the machine interface, which I think is a really important design principle for the next, you know, 30, 40 years before robots take over. And then SOLIDWORKS 2050 will be robots laughing at this conference uh, of well, people here. Well, yeah, that, that would be very interesting. Uh, uh, we could ask James Cameron about that from <laughs> last year, right? But um, uh, uh, now I got to see everything you were doing with SOLIDWORKS and it's super cool, but one piece we want to talk about in particular is how you use SOLIDWORKS surfacing to get these implants right. Yeah, really this, cool story here. This was a real challenge because we brought on some real ACE designers who had designed a variety of knee and hip implants and they see that we're using SOLIDWORKS and they're like, you know, I need to get a unigraphic system or Pro-E because we can't do these fancy surfaces. And we wanted to really push the envelope because Mako was doing super anatomic, very organic shapes that were even pushing what, we were, what anyone was in orthopedics. So I call up John and I'm like, John, you got to help me out. We've been on SOLIDWORKS so long we can't like bail out now. Yeah. So they connected me with some great folks and the surfacing problem was really resolved in a matter of weeks. It was amazing. Our team uh, did a wonderful job, but the process was we take clouds of data from the knees themselves. That data cloud actually drives a parametric model in SOLIDWORKS of all of our knee shapes for all the different sizes, and we have all these interesting ratios to get a perfect fit on, on your knee based on this whole family of hundreds of knees that we gathered, and it all happened in SOLIDWORKS and was great. Yeah, great use of surfacing. Now, how many surgeries have you actually done we're almost at 6,000 procedures today. Almost, almost 6,000 people have had it. And we actually have a patient, yeah, it's, a, it's amazing, yeah. But, you know, sometimes it's one thing to say 6,000 people, but it's a whole lot better to meet someone live in person. Please join me in welcoming an actual Mako knee surgery patient, Mr. Samuel Brooks. Hey, Samuel, welcome. Hey, buddy. So glad you could. I, I watched you hop right up those stairs, and yeah. you know, you wouldn't know. Look at this. <laughs> you know, you, you, we couldn't even tell which knee was, was the Mako well, knee. Can and you which, tell one. which one? If I do can anyone bands? tell? I mean, it's just, it's. Um, I mean, you know, this is what it's all about, guys. I mean, we build, we build the software, you design products, you know. But all of it's for nothing if it doesn't get to a customer and get to the to people of the world and do some good. And that's what's so great about having that's you great. here. Yeah. 
you know. Tell us, so tell us how long was the surgery? Of course, I was asleep during the surgery. I don't know how long <laughs> yeah. that took. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I do remember waking up in the recovery room and knowing that rehab was going to be the hardest part of, yeah. know, at least what, what friends have told yeah. me. I went ahead and started flexing while I was laying on the bed in the recovery room. And I was told that was not something that normally happens, you know. But anyway, no. two hours later, I'm in the room, and the urge hits. Well, I'm telling the nurse, I got to go, so let's walk over there. And I walked, actually, two hours after surgery, I was walking from the hospital bed to the, to the restroom. Two, two, hours two hours after knee surgery, surgery, he's walking to the, to the men's room. <laughs> Ronnie, you got to <laughs> feel awesome. Wrong, yeah, man. look at that. <laughs> That's it. You know, we talk about it. emotional paycheck. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a really too hard. Now, now with traditional knee surgery, Roni, you explain to me. Does anyone, if someone, you know, know anyone who has knee replacement surgery? Are they walking two hours later? I mean, no. You know, it's just crazy. Right? It's, it's it's weeks of rehab and recovery and months of really trying to get yourself back together. It's a totally different thing. It's a major, major surgery. It's very Actually, invasive. Guys, I was playing golf three days after surgery. Playing golf three days I later. I the course. You know, and that's a surgery that in the past would have been total knee replacement. And, and how about the result? How does the knee work oh, for you now? Oh, it's been a year and a half. And actually, this one kind of pains me more because there's arthritis in that one. In fact, so, uh, maybe, maybe Ronnie will let you do mine. You know, a couple oh, of yeah. Times. There you go. I, I, I got a new job. I'm going <laughs> to have John do that. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go to make a world and, <laughs> and show him how to do the surgery. Um, uh, Samuel. Um, uh, Samuel's re Samuel, your results, so you're saying the knee works, does it work as well as it did when, you know, when the knee was healthy oh, years no. ago? Oh, uh, no. When I was having, the, of course, I was bone on bone arthritis, and it hurt so much I would not want to walk. I was a literal couch potato, ballooned up 300 pounds, something like that, you Gosh. know, and hey, after this thing, being able to walk again, being able to bicycle, you know, do things with my family, it's just, it's just amazing. I can't thank these guys enough. Well, it's the ultimate reward, and Roni, yes. You have to feel great. You stuck with your vision for a decade, and now there's thousands of people who have benefited. And, Here and this is the payout. You know, someday I have a feeling there's going to be millions. And so, anyway, thank you both so much, Roni, for sharing you. your story. You, Samuel, for showing us what it really looks like in the end. Thank yeah. you guys both. We'll we will. You know, it's just. You know, we always say that the most exciting thing for us is seeing customers do great things with SolidWorks, and, and here's the proof, you know? And it's so great to see Bill building robotic technology, Roni taking that technology and building into a system, uh, a wonder of systems engineering that gives people benefit.